Anthony Hartwig here with another United Softball Coaches Corner, joined by Matt Zines. And uh, Matt, here we go. Softball season is swiftly approaching. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you having us. Uh, we appreciate everything you do, Anthony. I know we talked a little bit at the Gilmore Districts last year and uh, how much we appreciate not only what you do, but YSN does for United. Before we go into um, this season and everything that you expect out of this year, I want to kind of reflect on the end of last year. We didn't really get an exit interview after the <laughs> after the season was over. When you look at how last year ended and some of the things this team was able to accomplish, um, what are some things that you took away from last year that you're taking into this season? Um, you know, overall, we were happy with the, our season last year. But, but when you take a beating like Gilmore gave us at the end of the season – it leaves a pretty sour taste in your, in your mouth. You know, we won our first sectional championship, but uh, you, you know, you get that taste and you want more and that's not the way we wanted to end. And we are a much better team than we showed in that last game. I mean, hats off to Gilmore. They're an unbelievable team and they're loaded and they're loaded again this year. But uh, um, I think that kind of motivated some of our younger girls. Um, I think that inspired some of uh, the youth and uh, some of the girls coming up. So um, getting some success is helpful. I mean, we had three fantastic seniors last year, um, Colby Burton, Michaela Craig, and Brielle Rose. So um, it was a successful season for them, but I, I would have rather them gone out a, a little better than what they got to that last game. How much is that experience really going to help you guys this year of being at that spot and being at that level of softball and kind of knowing what that level of softball in districts looks like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the first time for a lot of these girls, I mean, some of them do play high level travel, but uh, it, there's something different about high school, you know, coming up through travel ranks, everybody wants to say that, you know, high school doesn't matter, but I'm telling you every high level girl I know that plays travel, they, they, they put a lot of emphasis on high school season and uh, you know, you get there to districts and it's not the typical, um, you know, stand in the middle of a field with, you know, 15 spectators, you know, you've got a crowd of people from multiple schools. You've got media there. They play the national anthem. They say your name. It's a, uh, it's a great experience. And it, it's, it shows what is accomplishable. It shows um, uh, it, it's, it's a definitely a big goal for, I think a lot of United girls now they got to go see that. So uh, that really helps us build the program and, and tell everybody, you know, you can get there when you get there, it is special. As we start talking about this season and and the things that you think the Eagles can do, let's go over your roster first. All the all the players that are coming back, some of the some of the uh, standouts that are coming back, but then also some of the new faces that are going to be uh, taking the field for you guys this season. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. Um, we have two seniors, but uh, we have seven returning, roughly starters. Uh, you know, Allie Lacey was a freshman last year, and uh, she had to step in when Michaela Craig. Uh, got hurt at third base and she did a fantastic job growing up really quickly last year. And I think, you know, as a freshman, we say all the time, you don't know what you don't know. And she learned real, real quick that, you know, to play at that high level, especially when you get the sectionals and districts, they, the, the pitchers, you know, they're not throwing 50, they're throwing 60 with movement. Everybody hits, everybody hits hard. The game moves fast. You know, it's not a one base thing. It's a two, three base thing. And uh, so to bring back seven girls, uh, most of them with two years of varsity starting under their belt, except for Allie. Um, that's a huge advantage for us. Um, you know, we got a lot of experience. We bring back at least six girls that batted over 300 with over 400 uh, on base percentage. And we've got multiple girls over 400 and one over five. So uh, we bring back a lot of offense. Um, you know, we've got two seniors. We've got Taylor Cope. Uh, Taylor Cope, uh, most of everybody knows her name. Why? Because she is a going to be. Um, a 12 letter winner. Uh, I don't know how many girls of United have ever done that, but I know it's pretty darn rare. Uh, she's a special athlete. Um, being a three sport athlete, you know, softball doesn't get as much attention as, you know, some of the other girls do, but she's such a gifted athlete that, you know, she makes up for that. Uh, she's very aggressive. She's big, strong, throws hard. And man, when she hits it, she hits it a ton. If we can get her to swing the bat more, uh, she's going to do some special things. The other senior is Tori Firth. Uh, uh, Pretty much anybody that knows softball knows her name. Um, in my honest opinion, she's the best softball player to ever play at United. And uh, a lot of her records reflect that. And that's, you know, a lot of those records, even uh, career records are already broken. And that's minus, you know, one season. And even with the shortened season last year. So uh, senior leadership is, is fantastic. We've got two great seniors, very good athletes and very good leaders. Um, on that, you know, on those returners, we've got four juniors that have roughly started since they were freshmen. Um, 
you know, everybody it, it plays travel. They, they play very well. Um, they're, they're all very special athletes. Sam Lippley plays shortstop for us. Um, she's getting some looks at the next level. Um, I don't know. I, I skipped over Tori there, but, you know, a lot of people don't know this yet, but Tori signed with Hiram, uh, which is one of the uh, best D3s in the state of Ohio. And um, a special thanks to the Columbiana coaches, Coach Kurtz. Um, they introduced Hiram to her. So, you know, we owe them a debt of gratitude for that. Um, but the juniors are fantastic. Maddie Lucas, Sam Lippiet, Maddie Zines, and uh, Josh and Irie, very good players, have played for a long time, had the experience. Um, you know, they're they're expected to perform and perform at a high level. They have for the last two years. Um, you know, uh, Josh and Irie is probably the most effective slap hitter that I've ever seen. She hits with power and she hits, um, she can lay it down in front of you too. So um, her on base percentage and her numbers are, are through the roof, you know, and Sam, I already said, she's already getting looked at the next level. So, you know, she's a fantastic player. Uh, Maddie Lucas is our center fielder. Why? And she's the, she's the best glove on the team. And uh, she, we, we all saw that catch that she made it crash you. So um, uh, Maddie's on, she's the coach's kid. So she doesn't get as much attention, but uh, she's actually going to get thrown in some pitching duties this year, even though she hasn't pitched before. Um, good because we need a little bit of pitching depth, but mostly she plays second base. Um, the other two returners that kind of got a lot of playing time last year, our sophomores are uh, Grace Coffey. Um, Grace uh, was supposed to split a lot of duties with uh, Brielle Rose, a catcher last year due to a short season. She didn't get as many reps as she should have, but uh, she went, she started playing some more winter ball. She went to catching lessons. She went to hitting lessons. And I'm telling you, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, you put that kind of time in and, and it shows she's done a fantastic job. Now she's a little picked up right now. Um, she'll probably miss our scrimmage tomorrow, but uh we expect big things from her because when she hits, she hits hard and she's done a fantastic job behind the plate. And Allie Lacey was, you know, I already kind of spoke about her fantastic player plays travel ball, uh, jumped in right at third base last year, um, fast, aggressive on the bases, does everything you would ask. And the other sophomore is Cam Cody. Cam um, hadn't played for a couple of years. So last year was her first year out. And I, I tell her this all the time. She can stick here in it, but I've never seen a kid <laughs> improve so much at softball in one year. And anybody who's played baseball or softball knows you know, you show up, you get very little instruction in high school and um, it, it, her work ethic and her maturity. And the, it, is it the improvement? I, I, I can't I just it's I can't speak enough about it. And that's a testament to her and how hard she works. And she just she just gets better every single day. Anyone that knows softball or baseball knows that it starts with pitching. You know, it's, 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 that's your lifeblood. And obviously you have one of the best ones in the YSN family in Tory Firth. This is going to be a scary question to everyone that has to play you guys, especially in that conference. But how, how has she improved? What kind of things has she grown in from year to year? Cause the great players find ways yeah. to better themselves. So Tory had a great season last year. What has she done in the off season and now gearing up for this year that, that you think that she has improved on? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously she was one of the better pitchers last year. Her numbers reflect that. I mean, um, you know, what a lot of people don't understand was last year she had labrum surgery right before the season. Her numbers were extremely limited. Um, and right now on the radar, she's a good five to six mile an hour faster than last year. Um, it, it, the play at the top level, it's, it's you know, you've got to throw more than fastball. So not only is she five or six miles faster, but she's developed a really nice off-speed pitch, a nice – change up, um, which, you know, we challenged her as a coaching staff. Like we, we need that off speed to beat the teams that we want to beat. We have to have off speed. We just can't dominate with the fastball. And she's put a ton of work in pitching uh, over the off season to develop that. She's got a couple new movement pitches. She works really hard on, but overall she just throws harder and she hits her spots better. And, uh, you know, we, we ask her to, to, you know, be, be that leader. You know, you're the best softball player that's ever come through here you need to be the best leader too. And now you're the senior and it's all on you. You didn't ask for it, but uh, and nobody really does. And, uh, and, and she has, you know, we've got a lot of great leaders on this team and, and she's one of them. And I think the freshman will tell you, they do a good job of, of helping the freshmen and being positive with them. But uh, you know, Tori is improved. Why? Because she puts in a ton of work. All right. So you talked about her leadership and what you're going to be asking of her as a leader. Who are some other players that you think are going to step into a big leadership role this season that you're going to lean on uh, on the field to kind of be that second coach? Um, I would say, you know, from what I've seen, I've been really impressed with a couple of the juniors that are stepping up and being more vocal. Um, 
you know, Sam Lippiot, I thought was a fantastic leader last year. She's very positive. And what I like about her is she really helps the, the underclassmen. Um, I, I see her a lot in the lines helping the girls. Um, she's a positive leader. She wants to win. Um, she's a shortstop. So she, you know, she makes a lot of calls out there for us. Um, she's very vocal, which is very helpful for coaching staff. Um, Josh and Irie, Maddie Zines and um, Maddie Lucas, typically not the most vocal kids, but I've seen a big jump with them this year in being vocal on the field. Um, you know, setting the practice back straight when we get a little sloppy, uh, motivating the, the underclassmen, working hard. Um, I, you know, I, as a coaching staff, you don't always see it, but you can hear it. And uh, I, I think that, you know, the girls that are, have returning experience and from hearing us beating their heads over and over and over again, um, they've, they've stepped up. I, I, I can't just really pinpoint one because they all have. When you look at the schedule, obviously the EOAC is the first thing you're focused on. That is the first goal. You have to win the conference before you do anything else. Um, what are you expecting out of the league this year? Obviously, Columbia is always in there and, and giving you guys a battle. And then you have Lisbon, who usually hits pretty well. Uh, what do you see out of the EOAC this year as far as competition? Yeah, we, we start with Lisbon. They're our rival. Uh, they've got a ton of success in history. So uh, we don't know, really know what they have um, this year, but I do know that. that you know, being the rival, like it, it, it's easy to motivate our kids. They're, they're kind of our school's rival. So we start with them very first week. We, you know, I think they come to us first and we go down there. Um, and then obviously Columbiana, um, you know, they stuck it to us pretty good the first matchup. And then the second one, you know, we did a nice job of making some corrections, being a little more aggressive in the strike zone and, uh, you know, you know, keeping the ball in front of us a little better defensively. The second time we played them made it a little bit more of a game. So uh, Columbia is loaded. There, there's no question they're the favorite to win the league. Um, they lost some key players, but I know they have a very young athletic uh, softball team that, that's going to fill those holes really well. So, I mean, they're clearly the favorite, but uh, uh, we sure would like to go, you know, give them a couple games. How much would it mean for this program to, to complete that goal and win the EOAC title this year? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, it's always our first goal, right? We have other goals, but the first goal, what we've got to do is we've got to win our league. That's what's expected of us every single year, um, regardless. That is the that is the uh, the, the uh, I, I think I think every team in the league, you know, that's got to be their first goal. Um, and we can't reach our other goals if we don't reach that goal. The teams that pop up outside of the conference are there to get you ready for the tournament time. Who are some teams that? pop up outside of the EOAC that you're, you're excited to challenge yourselves with. Yeah, we've got some decent out of league this year. Um, you know, in order to, to reach some of our goals, we got to play some better competition and get the girls in front of some better pitching. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to play, we're going to go down and play Edison. Uh, we're, actually we scrimmage up at the YSU Watt center and we really wanted to get the girls on some turf. So we're going to go down and play Edison early in the year. They've got a nice turf field. Um, main reason for doing that is we're going to Myrtle beach for spring training so everything down there is on turf and we have a few girls that have never played on turf. Um, and to be honest with you, the level we're going to play down there is probably a level we haven't really seen before um, where we get, you know, a good opportunity to play La Salle, Peru out of Illinois. They're a regional finalist from Illinois last year. And um, we're going to play the local team, Myrtle beach team, Anor. They are the uh, defending South Carolina state champions. So very excited to get the opportunity to play at that level. I mean, you know, if you get that, any team that gets that opportunity, you just can't pass that up. So getting down there, getting some games on turf early, getting down there, playing some really high level pitching, um, getting us ready to compete against teams like Columbiana. Um, we need to see that high level. And, you know, so the girls aren't kind of shell shocked by it. Um, we're playing Western Reserve. Always a good program. Crestview, uh, you know, one of the top four seeds out of the district last year. And uh, Crestwood, another top seed out of our district last year. Now they've moved up to D2 but always a, a, a perennial power. So, you know, we really want to challenge ourselves with, with teams that have consistently good programs that could give us a, a good look. One of the things we have to do before we let you go is give you the chance to talk about your staff. We do this every year. We want to make sure you get the chance to highlight all the people behind the scenes that help you out and help make this United softball program as good as it is. So who are some of the people behind the scenes that are helping you out? Yeah. One of the things I skipped over, Anthony, I want to mention was, you know, I, we talked, we didn't really mention incoming because I had so many returning starters, but I've got a good freshman class. Um, you know, I've got uh, Anna Weber, um, Kylie Hetherington, 
Marin Striefler and uh, Josie Wargo. And they have really impressed not only me, but the other coaches. Uh, they are very athletic. Um, they haven't played a whole lot of high-level travel ball, but you wouldn't know it. And, uh, you know, Josie Wargo is more – she's going to get on the field for us. If you were to draw up a softball player on paper, she'd be it. And uh, uh, she is a fantastic athlete, and I think um, she is going to be a name that people are going to know. Um, just, you know, once we get those high-level fundamentals into her, um, she's got all the tools. So, but, you know, one of the things we did was, you know, Josh Sigler, you know, he moved on to, to greener pastures as the AD of Beaver local. So um, I, I wanted to find a coach that, you know, not only knew softball at the highest level and, and really knew the fundamentals, but um, you know, cared as much about the girls as I did and uh, you know, would help it wanted, it wanted to teach them. And that was Jen Coons. I know I mentioned her last year. Um, she always came in and, and pitched live to us. Uh, she was a collegiate pitcher. So it's always nice to have somebody that can move the ball around, control it, um, kind of knows how to pick on batter's weaknesses and talk to them about it. So she, she's my assistant this year, and I can't say enough good things about her. You know, we had a scrimmage up at the YSU Watt Center, and, uh, I mean, she, she was just fantastic because you never know. I have, I've never been on the field with her. Um, I, I, I've never coached a game with her. I was, I was really pleasantly surprised. She does a fantastic job of practice. She's good with pitchers. She's good with catchers. And she's just, she cares so much about the kids and the community that it's a, it's a huge win for us. And, uh, you know, my wife, Stacy, uh, she's the other assistant and she is kind of like the, the do everything. I mean, all the paperwork, all the, the, the parent, you know, communications, the setups, the teardowns, the, uh, the mom on the team, um, fielding questions, talking to girls. She does so much stuff that is invaluable. I, I can't thank her enough. And then, um, coach Chris Firth, Tori's mom, she's been my scorekeeper, I don't know, 10 plus years. And, uh, she's the best scorekeeper in the business. I always tell everybody the amount of statistics and the book she keeps and what she knows to give me at what times and what I need to know, uh, really helps this team go a long way. All right, coach, as we let you get out of here, we'll give the United fans a shout out to when your first game is and when the first time they can go check out that softball team will be. Yeah, we're going to play. Uh, we're going to go up and play Liberty uh, the first game up in Youngstown. Um, that's on March 25th. That's opening day for us. And then, you know, we come right home to Lisbon on Monday. So I, our community is fantastic. I don't think I need to tell you that we uh, we, we have one of the best softball uh, fan bases there is. And and uh, they, they line the fields and they love our softball here and we love them back. So our girls are, you know, especially the freshmen. I, I told him, I said, it's it's a different experience when you've got that many people there to see you and and you're up to bat. It's a great feeling, and I can't wait for the, the girls to experience it. It'll be a busy day for Taylor Cope fans. They can go watch their player for a softball game, and then that night she'll be down at YSU participating in the YSN All-Star Game for basketball. So, yeah, busy United day. Fans, it's going to be a busy day. Coach, thank you so much for the time and coming on to join us today. We thank you for – uh, like I said, the time, uh, good luck this season, and we hope to talk to you again real soon. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Appreciate it.